recording right now. <laughs> these mics off my brother <laughs> what are you doing man and i want to know first of all yeah I, I didn't i did watch that when it came out uh i don't think i watched it very carefully right it's been uh, a crazy whirlwind for everyone in the world yeah. oh, I don't there's a lot of content i should probably talk into my microphone talking to your microphone yeah hello is your heart racing when you're doing that i was actually pretty chill I was yeah, like, your adrenaline's not pumping through you like crazy. Well, You're not like on a total like once. <laughs> once they started rushing at me, it was a little bit more than I was expecting. But I was uh, I was like in a in the zone. I I had known what I was gonna do and then planned it out and then did it and had a couple friends there to film it and then we released it and told the media and then the media was like, oh, how dare you? And then that went, you know, mini viral, local viral. And then someone on Twitter picked it up, and then that went medium viral. So it's a, it was a medium viral sensation for a week. The first week being all insults, and the second week being all compliments. And so where's your heart at? Where, where are you coming from on this? Why, why, why this? Yeah, I mean, I mean, have you, new have you been, ever been activist on any level before? Yeah, I'd say, um, okay. for sure. I my background is as a. I went to, I came to Niagara region from Toronto when I was 20 for college and I took journalism and I took journalism. I was motivated by an anti-war sentiment. It was 2004, uh, the Iraq war was happening and I felt informing people could sway their opinions about supporting things like war or so on and so forth. So that was my primary motivation, getting into journalism and, you know, I got into recording, uh, sorry, reporting on the local music scene at the time and got into marketing out of college and 2008, 2009, there's been a lot of changes in our society. I didn't keep up with all of them. So I, I went West for a while and I worked uh, in Alberta and Banff and we had a restaurant and, and then I came back and forth here to Niagara and one of my then friends and now girlfriend and baby mama 
Um, so Congratulations. Thank you. So that happened uh, this spring. So, uh, you know, my partner Shelby gave birth to our son in April. And so obviously April, we were in a hospital and experiencing, uh, you know, we're in the middle of the, of a locked down hospital and so on and so forth. Um, so that was sort of like, was, you could say it's a bit, I don't want to, as I don't want to say as, as if I'm special, but there is some sort of, uh, the, the experience was, it sucked. It was a bit traumatic to have no access to our parents, everyone being afraid of seeing each other. You know, we had a newborn and she had a C-section and it was all, you know, the usual, we, we moved to Niagara back from Alberta so she could give birth and be with our families. We could be near our families. And then because of COVID, uh, access to our families is, re was reduced down to very little. And so one, uh, one evening, right after the baby was born, I went to Shoppers Drug Mart to, this is my local Shoppers Drug Mart. I've been going to this particular Shoppers Drug Mart for years. So I, it's, it's not like it was a random Shoppers Drug Mart I picked. It was, it was the one that in April I went to and I went and I was, I couldn't, I couldn't choose which cream. She, Sh Shelby needed some nipple cream because the baby was making her nipples really raw. And so she's like, make sure you pick up some nipple cream. So I went through the whole <laughs> rigmarole. It's a thing, apparently. <laughs> I didn't. No, I know. I just nip specific nipple cream, or is this any generic? No, well, that's like, what. That's what. Well, because yeah, I guess you need something. That's how the hell am I supposed to know? <laughs> I'm just a guy, and I'm a simple <laughs> just... guy. Like I'm one dude in a store. Anyway, and usually what you do when you're in a store and you don't know what you need to do is is you ask for help. But like I went aisle after aisle. This is back in April, and there's no one there, and there's no there's no support, and so I felt very. So this was on that on that uh, on that evening. I had gone through and I had purchased a bunch of stuff, and then I left the store, and I was like, "Oh, I forgot the nipple cream." So I went back, and then I couldn't find any help, and so then I went back, and I was like, I looked. At the, I remember looking at the stickers on the floor and just feeling very, very much like the new normal, which we've all somehow accepted by now. Mm, but this was I April. I hate that term, but no, I mean, I. I I, I remember that term since 9-11. So when I heard the term new normal coming around, I mean, they put that on the front page of, of magazines like in, in October of 2001. So the first time I ever heard the term new normal was in like a post 9-11 thing. So then when they started saying new normal this time, it made, yeah, like I, I hate the term as well because nothing normal about it. Right. And since there is some nothing normal about it, uh, when will the stickers come up? Uh, and so I decided to take initiative and, and symbolic initiative because I knew obviously they're going to put the stickers back on the floor, but by making a viral video calling on people to take a stand, to draw the line, uh, that now is the time. These were all the things that motivated me. Um, I feel it's, it's better for me to, uh, it's in my incentive to take initiative now, as opposed to being reactive later. Well, wow, so you it mentioned so you mentioned that the initial reaction was harsh. Yeah. And then the support came after. Yeah. How are you finding it now and and uh Well, um so I did the scrape for truth uh viral video. It was harsh. And it went to you know, it went out to the world and we have a, a small YouTube channel where I posted a few other uh, pieces of content. So I went to the local library and I used the, you know, the um, reference of two plus two equals four, which right. is the George Orwell reference. And I invited someone who uh, I met, I believe because I became this infamous figure. So by becoming an infamous figure in early August, a few dozen people gravitated towards me and then with, I started working with them. Um, and so Danielle would be in that video, um, where two plus two equals four. That's not a hugs over masks one. That's on the scrape for truth channel. Um, not that we have to watch it. Uh, but so I did, uh, a bit of, um, YouTube journalism, 
I'm showing people, look, this is the library. It's closed. What are the consequences to a community of having a closed library? What does that signify? Because there's a lot of people who use the library because they're because they need to. Uh, you know, you look for a job or or it's too hot or like we had a we had a society and the library was a part of it. It's like a it's like a pillar of a community and mm -hmm. it's closed. So what does that say about the community? And I also did a video, you know, walking down Queen Street just being like, look, this building's closed and this building's closed. And I know it's been like that for years, but my point is how are we going to make a how are we going to make the world better if we're so hampered? It feels like there's a wet blanket on every business enterprise, on every family excursion, on every shopping trip. People are being really, really weighed down by the so-called new normal. What's the media coverage been like? I just caught that well, one interview with- Are we referring, so I mean like, we're, the media coverage of the Scrape for Truth thing, so John Law, the reporter for Niagara Falls Review, I feel treated me pretty fairly, and considering how wacky my stunt was i think he treated me really fairly um and then that that was it, then it was uh in in newsweek and it was in the national post and the national post didn't quite understand the quotes i gave them because we had a long conversation late at night and the 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 quotes didn't translate once it got to print Did you record your uh interviews I, t I tend to, but that one was a telephone interview. I didn't get the chance to. Mm -hmm. I actually find that to be really interesting to see what quotes they choose not to include. Right. And the observation I can make is, and I'm not sure if it's the journalist or the editor, and we can never really uh, know. And sometimes it's the journalist because it's the editor. So they already know what not to, you know, you know how to please your boss. So right. um, the the thing that seems not to be included by the journalists that we talk to is is our contention of the, of the World Health Organization um, being well we mistrusted anyway so that's uh, that was that sort of chapter one of this amazing adventure I've been on um, scrape for truth the viral video having a bunch of people gravitate towards me and meeting a few new people and also inspiring people, people saying things like, finally, a man willing to stand up. Just like so many women are so satisfied to see and excited to see someone finally do something. And I, I mean, I think it's because of uh, the willingness to take unilateral action because I think it's the right thing to do. And I think that's manly hmm. because uh, making decisions by consensus you know, I mean, I, I'm not uh, against agreements and all that stuff. I'm not against that. I'm saying doing nothing until you have an agreement is weak. And so taking unilateral action, deciding, you know what, I, I think this is the right thing to do and doing it, people resonate with that energy. And so a lot of people gravitated towards me. Meanwhile, completely unconnected to me and prior to anything I'd done is the Hugs Over Masks group. So the Hugs Over Masks group was founded by Colin McDonald and and Vlad. I'm sorry, Vlad. I, I don't remember your last name. Colin and Vlad. Um, I don't know their story actually about how they founded it, but they did. And over the last 20 some odd weeks, they've had weekly meetings in the park where, where they bring people out and they call it a festival of life. And Hugs Over Masks is a... Um, nonpartisan movement um it's like peace love positivity so they're um welcoming and nice and so they've been doing their things in saint Catharines, montevello park uh every sunday and a couple sundays ago wait i guess just one one week ago what day is it today today's tuesday, tuesday right so to so last sunday uh, i went to the one of their meetings and I said, the bylaws about to expire on the 17th is the meeting. If we do nothing, we've done nothing. Let's do something. Colin was like, good idea. He started the, the hugs over masks, Niagara page that night. And we started an event page. And then I had a plan to do Thursday and Saturday, 
because I kind of know the media likes to report on things that are upcoming. So it's not as useful to say, hey, guys, this happened. The media loves to say, hey, guys, this is about to happen. So you give them something that just happened, which is our Thursday protest, and then uh, they get something to talk about about what's about to happen, which was, was, was our Saturday protest. So we did 30, 30 people, 35 people on uh, on Thursday and about 80 people or more. I mean, maybe people came and go on, on Saturday um, with, with Hugs Over Masks, Niagara. And so we've taken on a very specific component of, we're taking on like a, on the legal layer we could we could take on the cultural problem like like scrape for truth peeling up the stickers that's like that's like a gorilla but that's not like classical protesting so we're at hugs over masks and what we've been doing once i i guess joined hugs over masks or started leading i'm not sure what exactly happened but i showed up with a plan everyone said finally someone with a plan and then we've been like full steam. What do you, uh, have you taken account? Are you lobbying counselors? Do you uh, know who's on your side and who might be able to affect other I, votes? I or is it, are you that organized or? Um, I haven't been that smart. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, the, house, I mean, the house of cards aspect of it is. Yeah, because I just, I, I you know, I've got I, some serious concerns too. I mean, sure. I, I've said since the beginning of this pandemic that, um, one, it's not a pandemic anymore. Can we stop calling it one? Um, two, like, we've been watching our liberties go out the window since 9-11 on a bunch of different things. And yeah. so but then I kind of feel like it's a done deal because the majority of council, you know, for whatever reason, science or not, no matter how much evidence they're presented with, I think they feel like it's the popular thing to do and that it makes them look good. Like they're standing for public safety or whatever. I, I'm not convinced yeah. that we don't look back and see major problems with wearing the mask through all this health problems yeah. that we might not be That's getting right now. Absolutely. That we're not that educated on. We're just still learning about the the virus. We've never mass people in this capacity before uh, I can't wear one I mean I just it's so like for a number of reasons I won't put one on now if I'm working and somebody's paying me to wear it in a limited capacity but what a pain in the ass and I, and I just wonder you know I, I appreciate it but do you think you're really going to have an effective like, I look at it like it's a done deal. They're going to extend it, and we're going to be under this thing for as long as they feel like it because the people don't really have a voice. Call that resigned and cynical, but it's just kind of... Well, I mean, I didn't call it resigned or cynical, but... I consider myself that, to be honest. Sure. <laughs> well, um, I think I might have done nothing at all if I didn't have a newborn. Um, but he's so innocent. Um, and he doesn't deserve really any of the treatment he's about to receive for existing. Um, and that includes, that includes the, uh, the cultural revolution that includes, <laughs> um, the anti-white racism that includes, uh, the communism that like his future is a communist cultural revolution that's targeting him because of who he is. Uh, and that motivated me to break through my complacency, my personal complacency. Um, or to, because if I, if I do nothing, then I fail as a father. And if I do something, I might succeed as a father. So, so then I had to do something in order to at least, at least you could have say a chance. You tried. You didn't sit back and just let it right. go over. And that's, yeah. hey, I know exactly where you are i've been there in politics and thought you know what i might be able to make a difference and then look back and going well that that <laughs> that didn't go the way i planned it yeah and then you know it's almost like it's not a regret but you're like you know that's a lot of energy yeah and 
you know, if you're concerned about your employability being seen as a shit disturber, for lack of a better yeah. term, um, I love anything that brings awareness to an issue. And that's, I don't have the science on masks. I've just seen enough. And personally, like my lungs don't operate with a mask on, like I, chronic lung problems all the time. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, did I'm you, looking did for. Did you go I, through it in, I haven't in April gone, and, and March when it was first, like? Did uh, I go through what? Like, did you try? What a mask! Mm -hmm. I can't. No, there's no, no way. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I wore one the other tried, night for the first time. There's like, no way I can yeah. do a mask on my face. So we definitely tried, um, and we we felt horrible. Mm -hmm. I felt physically and emotionally mm -hmm. horrible. Um, yeah, I want, and see, what that's not. We're not calculating that And then I just stayed home. Too. The, the impact of not seeing facial expressions right. with your daily interactions. Like, yeah. you know, you know what? So, like, so if you hid, science if you hid that, your facial expressions from your son, so you'd turn so out to things. be a psychopath. Science. Yeah. They love science. Use mm. the science. Well, what about the science of nonverbal cues? What about the science of us being social creatures? Uh, what are the consequences? Mm. Um, Science is, is, isn't, is, isn't a bludgeon to use to uh, exact agendas. Uh, and in the media and uh, from a certain set of the public and politicians, science is used as if it's gospel. Well, facts matter. Yes. So facts over fear, right? Mm. That is the name of our campaign this week. Mm -hmm. And... So when I designed my plan to have a protest uh, in on uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, I also planned to have a protest uh, at the media because I knew that, look, if you go to CKTB, whatever it is, .com or iHeartRadio, CKTB. Oh, it's a horrible platform, dude. The, their app sucks and the platform is horribly clunky, but no. It I is just, clunky. You know, those 30 I'll just stay on your Facebook you page. Play. But anyways, on 610, what, the media or the interview? No, I'm. the point I'm making is that when you visit their, when one visits their page, what they experience is the top banner is COVID story after 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 COVID story. Should I go on? And COVID story after COVID story after COVID story. Well, that's isn't that standard with just about everyone in the 85? business now? That's all they're doing is So using. what what happened with the whole business? So COVID is their cash cow. It's their bread and butter. Uh, if if Seven new cases in Niagara. If egg, people right? stopped being afraid of COVID, why would they keep reading their papers and reading, listening? So, I mean, like, the, it's in their interests to maintain their audience's expectations. And so there's this, you know, the audience expects something, so they deliver it. You know, CKTB got purchased twice, three times, yeah, at least. Yeah, it's so, Bell now. So it got purchased now by Bell Media, which is owned by BCE, Bell, Bell Corporate Empire, or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, so imagine um, a telecom company has incentives they have incentives right they're a corporation so um a high-speed internet sitting at home like what are their incentives in order what kind of society do they want to have to make more money i'm just saying that the telecom companies might have an incentive to have a zoom-based society because you're going to need your high-speed internet like i'm i'm not saying it's a conspiracy i'm saying that there's just incentives I'm saying that these corporate incentives, so take someone like Matt Holmes, you call this knuckleheads, us being the, uh, the hugs over mask protesters. I mean, there's a recording on our, on our hugs over masks, Niagara page of, uh, of Matt Holmes a little further down, but it's all right. Of uh, I've been calling us knuckleheads and, um, siding with the four week pause. So I'm not, I'm not sure what his editorial role is. He's just a host, but he's a host who had a particular opinion. Uh, and his opinion was to side with the four week pause while calling us knuckleheads. And, uh, and I started thinking, well, what a lot of times people like me or people from the, down the rabbit hole, come back up the rabbit hole and they, they say things which sound crazy. They say, especially to people, people like this, where you'll accuse this guy of, was well, he taking orders from the from the smoky men and the conspiracy? Is there, is he having his strings being pulled? 
I don't think so. I don't think most people in these corporate worlds are having their strings being pulled explicitly. I think that the, the only reason they have the position they have is because they don't need to have their strings being pulled because they already understand the psychological profile they need to have to be in that position. So that's why the mainstream media seems to operate as it does in my view. Um, I don't know what you think. You're a, you're you, you're a media, very very media focused, media savvy person. You have your experience in it as well. I guess more a critic than anything, and it's so easy for me because I just come by it naturally. And that's, you know, I really struggle with staying positive because I see something wrong, I make fun of it, and the people that are taking part in it, right? I it's comedy, you yeah. know, it's ridicule and. It comes from a place of love because I care. The problem is for me lately is my politics have changed a little bit and I'm all about liberties, free speech. Right. You know, like absolutely nothing gets done if you can't say fire in a crowded theater. I get, you know, there needs to be a fire to say it. And I get that, <laughs> you know, it's not cool to cause a riot for no reason and that should be you know, you should be penalized for that, even criminally, but nobody's going to stop you from doing it. And then the mandatory speech thing came up. You can't make me say certain words, just, yeah. you know. And so th that's what I, because I, fr I believe that this talking is how we learn. If I say something incorrect, you correct me. Or you, you offer evidence why maybe I should be more or flexible on that position. Out of your mouth. And, and then I've like, seen oh, it in myself. I've yeah, yeah. changed positions on so many major sure. issues since yeah. I've aged and had a, yeah. I don't know, I've kind of, I, I got a red pill. okay? So I know yeah. it's a popular term these days, but I'm still kind of a lefty for social issues and stuff like that, but don't screw right. with my speech. Right. And that's number one, because I, I believe that if we can't speak, speaking is how we think. It's right. how we test our ideas and opinions on people. Right. And we find support or we find ridicule or criticism. And that's without that. And that's why I'm a free speech absolutist, if that's what you call it. There's nothing that you, I mean, sure. I get that you can make certain speech illegal. I'm against it. I say, let them say whatever they want so we know who the idiots are. Sure. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Let, let them expose themselves. Yeah. So. That's that's been my and and then part of the red pilling is really becoming awake to the nonstop mainstream media narrative bashing of false narratives. These right. are lies they're they're perpetuating every day, and it it, it it my heart is breaking. My heart's breaking for the riots, you know. Right. And certain people get a pass. I said on my show last night, how is Nick Cannon still employed? If that. Black man. If any right. per, anybody else mm -hmm. said those things, canceled forever. And right. I saw him on the one of the biggest shows on TV the other day hosting. I'm like, I thought he'd be done. I just assumed he was done forever, but no. I actually had never heard he existed before. So, and time. then I experienced it with John. John Law always has been very fair with mm -hmm. me, but usually the stuff he reports on is kind of like an upbeat piece. Anyways, it's a promo piece of, yeah. you know, maybe an event I was doing or whatever. Yeah. Grant LaFleche back in the day had beers with the guy. I don't consider, I wouldn't have considered him a friend, but we were friendly. Sure. Uh, he would cover me. Well, and back in the day, it was Matthew Van Dodgen, a very good reporter. Um, I wouldn't say sympathetic or supportive, but like I was an entertaining guy. On, like I, I know how to. This is in your role Green as Party. a Green Party yeah. uh, advocate or, or candidate? Candidate. Right. And so I don't know who wrote the article, but there is a standard article of, you know, if, if, you know, if the, if the election was based on this vote, it's the Jim Fannin show type of thing. Like I, cause I'm entertaining and I have some fun and I right. bring facts. And, um, you know, well, since I've, since, still going. since I've red pilled yeah. and now what, I, what now year I, was that? Or do you have, well, a, I started in 93. So, and then it was 93, 03, 06, 08. Um, I don't know. Oh. Well, my last one was oh. maybe 12. It was under Elizabeth May again. And, um, sorry, no, my question was, uh, your red pill. Yeah. Over the last four or five years, I would yeah. say slowly. Yeah. 
So like and from safe space through trigger warnings, through white privilege, through check your privilege, through yeah, pay Jordan gap, Peterson, all those through, false narratives busted. And now it's J.K. Rowling as a turf. And, yeah, yeah. And so now, so then I got my you know, John calls the other day because I said some unkind things about a local regional counselor who's playing a key role in this. All of a sudden, she comes out of six months of uh, six weeks of. Twitter hibernation to say, well, the only people that are, you know, yeah, uh, that are presenting are the, you know, the anti-mask people. Now right. she's drumming up. So, okay, I guess, but yeah, you know, and that's a whole different issue. What I went off on, but mm -hmm. I recorded my interview with John Law. I've never made it public. I've never let anyone. In fact, I've never listened to it. Yeah, I would. I should listen to it because what they put in the paper. I mean, they cherry picked. I said what they put in the paper. Maybe not exactly. Yeah. But, you and I don't find... take any of it back, but it was so, like, I said a lot of things in that 15 minute interview right. with John Law. Once you're Number one minutes, is like, I like Laura. Yeah. Like, like, all kinds of stuff that didn't make the paper. Right. You know, the fact that I had a couple drinks, the fact that I wasn't taking it back, and the fact that I said I just let my shit fly and I'm not sorry and I don't take it back, that stuff all made. So yeah. I really got this time, you know, and I've always, I've been taken out of context for several, misquoted several times and, sure. you know, and that's why I record my interviews now, but it's, um, it's a new day is the, you know, how the media sees me when I do make that. I mean, I'm not trying to make the media, you know, people think I'm just, you know, I'm trying to figure out if looking for the media attention. did us a favor, if we did the media a favor with this protest thing. Both, both. No, they love the story. They love it. But they look also their, love to talk down to you their, and call you knuckleheads sure, and saying but, you're activists and radicals and extremists and all this kind of stuff. Social medias. So well, why isn't the media fighting for free speech? At the very least, you think journalists would have the number one thing is free speech, but no, they curtail it at every corner. It's, well, it, it baffles I mean, my mind. What do you mind. mean by for, by that in, in this case? I just mean anyone's speech that's being curtailed. You'd think the media would be ah no. We don't stand for that because right. they are, I mean, if you don't have free speech and media. Yeah, I mean, we've so. been misrepresented and the, the smear that they did with us was, so what happened was on Thursday, uh, we had our protest going and we had actually wasn't even a protest yet. We literally had just gotten there and we were just standing around and uh, uh, the journal, the reporter and the photographer showed up. And, and then when I got home, I learned that someone had said something threatening to the photographer. So the photographer was acting a little bit spooky, but that's how photographers act. Like off in the corner being like, Ksh -ksh -ksh, which is would, obviously I completely support. We literally invited them. Uh, but some person who at the time was a member said, uh, if you take my picture, I'll smash your camera. And then, so she reaches in her pocket, pulls out her phone and tweets it right away. And that's the only thing she tweeted in five days. So it's like, she didn't even give us a chance to represent ourselves. She let an outlier, the literally 0.000%, like 1% of the experience of the entire day. And she let that represent us. Uh, and she didn't even give it time to see, well, what else will happen in 15 minutes? So she had her, she had her mind made up about us. And so the first bad thing that happened straight to Twitter, 35 retweets. And then you have Grant LaFleche, and Ray Spiteri and Alan Banner and John. I don't think John did, but anyway, they're all retweeting it as if it proves something. As if, oh, look, the anti maskers are hypo. The hugs over masks, facts over fear, love over fear, such a hypocrisy. Well, that that is a complete smear. Uh, and they, they ran it as the Niagara Daily's editorial. Um, we're not even going to touch the fact that a group that uses the hashtag love over fear then had one of their members threaten us to smash their camera. I just, I told them that that member was excluded from our group. So I'm calling upon the Niagara dailies to, to retract that um, because they're not a member. The facts are facts. They claimed a member did a thing. We kicked them out, and they know that, and they didn't acknowledge that. And I think that's completely unethical. Mm -hmm. That is completely unethical for the Niagara Daily's editorial. They know full well we kicked that person out of the group. A and if you want, we can just—they're going to take 
the softest little like it's it's a bad thing that happened but it wasn't burning down a building it wasn't burning down a wendy's it was mostly peaceful protest we're in the era of mostly peaceful protests so we have a media which will run cover and justify all sorts of terror um because they believe in the cause but then they'll on the other side if you don't believe if they don't believe in the cause they'll find the tiniest little thing and then smear it all over the place Mm. Uh, and that's just one little example uh, the one that we experienced this week with uh, with what we've been up to. So on Thursday, Thursday is the vote for Niagara Region to extend the mask bylaw. Um, did you know, you might know, we didn't know until yesterday that it's by seven months. It's until April 1st, 2021. <laughs> um which they announced through the Niagara Region Facebook page uh, yesterday evening as they called for more people to ask to submit their opinions. They're asking for people to submit their opinions after the deadline, which we got five delegates in before the deadline. So I know the game and last week said, hey, everyone, sign up. And they did. <laughs> so we had five delegates against the bylaw. And so Laura Ip on Matt Holmes, was it yesterday yeah. morning? Uh, said, you know, we, we do listen to our delegates, um, which is why we needed to bring some more people with a different opinion in. Um, so she, you know, mobilized her Twitter base and and uh, used the media to reach out. And they had a, a laughably disturbing conversation. Oh, she laughed all the way through it. She I don't know what, laughing. I don't know what is so funny about this. This isn't actually that funny. No. Well, the, I mean, the I called her one time. You know, she's supposed is that to... a word smuggery. Smug. The being smug <laughs> is very. It's just like take us seriously. We are real people. We have real concerns. I want to say that it's a nervous habit on air because I can hear her breathing. Yeah, I know it's sure. not natural for her. I know she's right. amped up. I know she's passionate. I know she cares. I know all that kind of stuff. I can hear that she's nervous. Well, uh, so I want to pass it though? off to, to, you know, it's a nervous giggle, yeah. but it just, she's like, I don't know. The, it was about, it's the, not funny. No, I mean, especially because but she's she a feminist. Was, don't and you she, wish, yeah. don't you wish that the government above us would make the decisions for us? And Matt Holmes said, they're telling the kids how to be, but not the adults. And oh, like, yeah. I, I oh, stop and be... I say, no, we tell the government how to be. The government doesn't tell us how to be. So he wants the government to, to tell How can adults. this all be normal and supportive? How can people listen to this and go, wait a second? All right. Uh, they, no, want us to, they want to mandatory mask us until next April. Like, Why not uh, May? How are people so eager to fall in line you got me on camera for just yeah seven more months how are they so eager to fall in line like sheep and just get and just like i haven't done the in-depth research on the science of masks okay i know if if i have a beard like yours the mask you're wearing pretty much does nothing you know those paper masks i know that you shouldn't touch the masks like everyone i see that's wearing a mask is touching it all the time that's right you know, the guy that tried to get me to wear a mask at the uh, market, who's belligerent, who followed me around, and I, you know, I had to get rude with him, and then and, and finally left me alone, went over and stopped, stood with the, you know, the security guard and pointed at me and stuff like this. He was holding the face of the mask while he was giving it to me. Like, uh, that's absurd. Like, I know, I, I just, so, and for the, for the risk, for for the recovery rate, there's like I've done a lot of research on the virus. Yeah. Not, not masks. I just know that it makes me feel like shit. Yeah. If I ever put something like that on, like I've I've tried to wear masks for other reasons. I don't get into that. You know, like I just don't like coverings on my face if yeah. I can help it. And uh, you know, obstructing your breathing, and then you know, you read into the science of the bacteria that forms and how often you have to wash them or dispose of them. Like right. these masks are disposable. You wear them once, you put them in the garbage. Yeah. So I was no down to wearing their masks like that today. Uh, I went down to Clifton Hill and uh, we had a very small demonstration. A uh, handful of us were there, and I went town crier on Clifton Hill. So I was, I, I'm loud. 
I was loud and I was saying masks are to be worn above the nose, not on the chin. You're, you're, you're sweating into your mask. You're collecting skin, which is decaying. Masks are to be thrown out after 90 minutes. If your mask is dirty, don't use it. Just on and on. Because people are walking around like, like they've got a, a beard, a mask beard. Like they've got that thing. That, and it's that's worse for you. That's scientifically worse for you. I'm, and, and I mean, I'm just weighing in onto the conversation because I happen to be aware of that by now. But... And and it was I was also there saying seven seven months, you know, just April, and a lot of people were kind of into it. They're like, oh yeah, keep it going. So I start being satirical. I'm like, masks forever, you know. And the other side, vote no, and that's for the uh, the vote. So Jim Diodati said that he uh, that he was against. Uh, that he supported rescinding Niagara Region's state of emergency. And that was in the media and, you know, so here's here's my here's my view. And uh, maybe you give me some insights on this. But I think that the St. Catharines Cabal loves to throw Niagara Falls under the bus. Uh and so I noticed that over the last 4 weeks before the mask thing. So what happened in the news the week of the mask vote? Well, Mayor Bilsma had to answer for being an anti-feminist, anti-identitarian, right? Remember this? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, why? Because he was anti-mask. Not directly, but maybe uh, if the only anti-mask voice in the region can be thrown under the bus for also being a racist, isn't that a bonus? Um, that's typical. Yeah, it's typical that's tactics. Typical. So then also, and so to get back into my point about the St. Catharines Cabal throwing Niagara Falls under the bus, and that's just a way of putting it, you know. Um, but they they posted this, someone posted this video of Clifton Hill where there was a ton of people uh, hanging out and having a good time at Clifton Hill. And then the radio station and the local media picked it up. And, the, and you know. It was barely a viral video, but they declared it a viral video and they pumped it every half hour. And this is before the vote, um, before the vote to initiate the mask bylaw. And so what I'm saying is it's part of the manufacturing of consent. The uh, the Clifton Hill video was, became a story like, oh, look, uh, Niagara Falls is so irresponsible. This is where the next outbreak is going to come from. And so... Mayor Jim voted yes to the bylaw, but it was just for two months. And now our two months are up and they're saying, they're saying seven months, they're saying April 1st of all days. What do you think? Uh, do you have a, a sense of who is against it currently? Is, uh, I'm not, I'm not actually an expert on who the, who even the, who even the counselors are. Um, You're all activists, no politics. Oh, yeah, I'm fair. <laughs> you got to no, get political. You got to you got to get behind the scenes and start lobbying these guys to get some votes. That's true. I was like that at Brock too with with the student council. I'd never really tried to work them one by one. Mm -hmm. I was always a high level symbolic message guy, and then I didn't really. Once in a while, there were like a a couple counselors where you try to develop a relationship with and an inside track with and so forth. Yeah, I was I was doing that Brock stuff for about four years. I mean, actually more like seven, but four years of going to council, um, and the student media never goes to council. And the, in fact, the the truth is they weren't even filming their own council meetings until I started filming them back in 2013. Region? Then, uh, no, I'm talking about the uh, Brock. Just briefly. Oh, oh okay. And it's it's. it's it's like my training ground. It was like my like kid camp for what I guess we have to deal with now with the region. And for years, people were like, why don't you take on the region? I was like, no, I'm dealing with this. And I dealt with it long enough until they banned me for the second time. But, you know, that's the thing. I took a photo of a counselor and the counselor said, please delete that photo. And I said, no. And he said, you know, well, cancel the meeting, call security. It was, it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. 
And so that kind of was part of my radicalization process if if or error or giving up on a different mode of being. So I'm a journalist. I went to school for journalism, graduated in, from journalism, went to marketing. I was in marketing. Um, I tried to play it real clean too, to make a difference at Brock, you know, uh, be as polite as possible, be as accurate as possible, be as fair as possible. Um, just obviously I failed in certain categories at certain times and, and didn't succeed all the time, but I did put in my best foot forward and by, and by 2019, when I did my last round of Brock University Gadfly, it was my best version of myself. And I still got banned. So for 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 taking a photo. And then and then and then nobody cared in the entire region. I don't blame them though. I mean, at the time it was Christmas and then Iran, uh, Trump bombed someone in Iran and then Iran uh, airplane and then you remember 2020. So I don't blame no one for caring that I that I got banned from a student council, but symbolically on a micro level, we're talking about the next generation. They are corporatists, uh, bureaucrats, and someone like me uh, going in there and pointing out correctly their corruption. Corruption may be a little hard way of putting it. Let's call it uh, uh, insufficiency insufficiencies in in fulfilling their mandates uh, as as an organization and we're and it's not piddly it's not just symbolic it's millions of dollars that come out of students pockets every year uh uh in a fake democracy you know vote now but only like 15 percent vote and they never put in a real effort to ask you know because the media you know it's it's a microcosm so what happened at brock in a microcosm is happening in the world in a larger cosm uh, a, a larger view hmm Oh, because you brought some water. I was going to say, I didn't even offer you water. I got my coffee. You got a comfortable chair. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. And then that, uh, the last meeting of Brock University Students Union, of uh, Student Council, before the new normal, before Zoom and everything else, before the very last meeting was I walked into that room after being banned. And they said, you know, you're not welcome back. And I said, you can't. I mean, it's a public meeting. You're doing public business. I'm going to sit there. Maybe I can't talk. Okay, but I'm going to sit there. And they're like, nope. So I, I sat down and they canceled the meeting and they ran away. <laughs> and I, instead, because they told me they'd call security. And I said, go right ahead. And then they didn't because they knew that that would probably play right into my hands. And then they ran off. And that was the last BUSAC meeting I ever. The last meeting ended with me, with them running away from me and laughing at them. And then I was done. That was it. That's the end of the the, the old the, the old gadfly. <laughs> and then baby time. And look, the I have a a, a business, a, or I would have a business if the world hadn't gone to shit. And that was uh, Axiometric Games. I, I make uh, making mobile games. Mm -hmm. So I have like a a, a Tetris like game with triangles, and I have a, a puzzle games and stuff. I make Unity games. I'm a, a programmer. And in January, my friend from high school invested thousands of dollars in that business so i had a bit of a opportunity a, a bit of time so so while all of this uh 2020 stuff was happening i was trying to put my life together mm -hmm. um and then having a baby and so forth but but the riots the the and the friends justifying the riots was 45 days of my life of fighting we're talking what was it may through from May 26th until whenever the fuck we gave up on talking about it, the hell we went through. Um, I, I unfriended everyone I could get my hands on because I'm done with being the unfriended one because the, no, 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 no. They're justifying the violence. They're out. I'm done with saying, please accept me. No, no, I don't accept you. And so I cut out tons of people by June and then on and on. So I, I went through a bit of a conditioning process uh, where I, where I became more uh, invulnerable because everything that could be taken from me socially, emotionally, and psychologically perhaps already had been. Obviously I have, I remain to have vulnerabilities, 
but I no longer had the friends that I would lose if I spoke up. And then by the time August rolled around, it was like, I don't want to be friends with anyone in this world. All I want to do is what I have to do. And I, so like what I'm saying is by cutting off all of the dead weight, I was able to become more in the direction of what I think, you know, what I've, we've been manifesting over the last 40 days. And so since pulling up stickers, it's like the feeling of being disempowered is gone. And now I'm an active participant in my world for, for once, finally. And for once I'm championing something that other people actually care about. So I spent what was it six, seven years championing Brock stuff. And I had one or two people every few months being like, Oh, great job. Okay. Well, this, this is like, I've never been part of something that had so much energy that I've put, I've, you know, I make media, I, I talk about this and that. How often does it get shares? How often do people actually want to come out to events? So this is a, this is a very special moment for, for me and for these people who are participating in this group, hugs over masks. And, and really the, the danger is how are they going to feel on Friday when the foregone conclusion is concluded? Uh, the danger is how do you leave it a movement through failure? Uh, how, how do you not break their hearts when you gave them hope? Uh, well, being prepared, I guess. I don't know. I mean, just being like, mm-hmm. not, not, not uh, being attached to the results, I think is, is the best advice I can give myself and the, and the other people. Ultimately, if, if council goes along with this, it's just it's just rendering themselves more and more irrelevant to us. It's just being like it's more egg on the face. Well, I hear you and I share your frustration. And my mother, if she was here, would tell a guy like you or a guy like me, you know what? Who cares? Who cares who's mayor? Who cares if they do the like, really? And I care, you know, Um and uh, I'm just continually surprised by the amount of people. I saw a girl with a mask on in the lake the other day. There's was it nice? So, there, was it, did it have a nice flower, floral no, no, pattern? No, it wasn't or? nice at all. It was one of those cheap blue masks. <laughs> and I just, I see them out walking alone on the sidewalk down a street. Why would you ever, you're going for fresh air. Right. Your body already has a filter and that's, it works fine. Why would you ever indeed? No. Well, so I just, I mean, there are questions. I of, see them in their cars and you know, I'm of, so of, judgmental. And I'm trying to get over it, but like, I, I really feel like, you know, some data coming out right now that, the infections are spiking in the areas where the mandatory masks have been implemented. I'm not saying it's directly related, but it might be co- 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 well, correlated you somehow. That they say, how much worse would it be if there weren't masks? We could have done. Okay, here's my take That's on the whole thing. That's what they thing. actually say. They say, oh, there's only the 300 six... cases if you didn't have masks. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's we'd such be bullshit. In spike, spike, spike. Here's the thing: we could have accomplished what we accomplished without shutting the economy down, without bankrupting people, without driving people to suicide and alcohol abuse, by just social distancing. <laughs> Wash your hands. Be po- you, you know, I heard, you know how you hear something, you don't, know, and it becomes part of your fact base, but you don't know where to find it, and you, you know you try and research and whatever. Right. So I don't know how credible this is, and I'm not saying that it's fact. You're pulling it out of the gut. No, yeah, it's just it's something I've always known that if you are in an elevator, a con- you know, with someone that's got a cold and is coughing and sneezing and hacking and whatever, as long as you're not standing underneath them or in front of them where it can goes into your eyes or, or right. you don't touch anything that they touch, right. there's almost 0% chance you get the common cold from an aerosol infection. Right. In an elevator. Yeah, because yeah. the droplets drop so fast. I don't know the exact, but I've always, yeah. I don't know where, and I can't, I'm not saying it's science, but it was just like one of those things, like, dude, like it's, you have to touch something. And that's, you know, everyone's so missing like this. A tiny the major, 
transmission and the then contagion, the percentage. The of, contagion of this virus is all through contact. Right. Like I don't know what the what the percentages are, but the, the minority, the vast minority right. of the infections are aerosol. Right. They've got us worried that you're gonna walk by someone on the street and get COVID. They because do. you're that's you know how they unlikely do. that is? And we bought it. You know, when we launched the website, the first t-shirt's gonna be we've been duped. I was there one time. Yeah. I didn't know what Black Lives Matter meant, no, meant until I looked into it. And I'm like, wait, what's the stats say? Oh, well, the stats say it's all bullshit. It's a lie. It's, you know? Right. And so it's just so frustrating because, you know, we thought we knew what we were doing. We're learning. Yeah, there's going to be some bumps in the road. I, You know, I don't know why we didn't halt traffic from China immediately in Canada. And I thought we'd pay a significant price for, we still haven't. They did in the States. Yeah, they let the Nationals back in. I know it was a limited travel ban, but they weren't, you know, they weren't having any Chinese that weren't American citizens come home. I actually and, thought it was reverse psychology. I thought that Canada did nothing so that the people would, out of rebellion, demand it. So, hmm. because now everyone has become control me, keep me safe. You know, I'll wear the mask and so on and so forth. Um, I think it's part of the reverse psychology of, uh, of of the public coming to ask for it, to ask for. I I can't. I don't want to believe that this is a test. Isn't everything for jamming more liberty for stealing more of our liberties? Oh well, that mask thing went no problem. Look at how fast we got almost a hundred percent buy-in from the public. What? When's the government maybe, done anything maybe. with your liberties where everyone bought in immediately? No question. No science, no evidence, no research, no nothing. Just, yeah, we think they can't. Well, it's better to be safe than sorry, you know, uh, the least harm. It's going to cause you less harm by wearing a mask. And oh, don't forget, you're protecting other people. So if you don't wear a mask, you don't care about other people. Yeah, the gaslighting is unfortunate um, because they, they, there is this impression that there's a, mon a monopoly on empathy um, mm. and that's that's been wielded by the left in every context that the left can get its hands on. So, and it's to be expected in a way now that it's so commonplace. You find any reason to lord over each other and and go for it, you know, um, and which is why I, I admired, you know, the approach that Hugs Over Masks was taking, which is um, not to be sort of berating the uh, the alternative view or the uh, the official view, but to to be nice about it. And, and that's, you know, that's good. I'm a fairly diplomatic person, actually. Uh, I found that most times that I'm non diplomatic, it's shooting myself in the foot. Um, and so I end up being like, you know, I I don't I in a in a in a a bar or in a, a, a smoke break and we're having a conversation and you know, off the record I might go down like the deepest craziest rabbit hole but when I'm in an advocacy position you know I I think I'm, I'm a fairly diplomatic person who's I'm just trying to express the point of view with authenticity uh, being myself and yet. Um, speaking as clearly and effectively to the issues that they're uh, on the table. The new normal. What's next for you? Uh, well, I'm going to have a little bit of a baby vacation after this. I hope that... No, I mean, what's next leading up to the... the, the when is it? Thursday? Oh, the movement. The, yeah. You the, asked about me. No, no. The uh, movement. Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're doing tomorrow. Uh, we're taking on the We're taking on the media. Um, as, as I knew the media wouldn't be too fond of us, uh, in our position and that, uh, actually there's no point advocating to the public until you humiliate the media. The, the public is under the media spell, the media. And I say the media, it's an easy way to say it, but it's just the, there's the way it is. Uh, and in, and in Niagara region, that's, that's CKTB news talk. That's, uh. That's the Niagara Dailies. Um, 
And so we're going uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 11.30. We're going to be outside of the White House of Rock. And uh, I will have a couple new signs uh, saying, you know, no smears or I, I don't know. It's up to the people uh, what to what to say. Um, I expect a few dozen people actually for tomorrow morning because there seems to be a lot of, yeah, uh, we want to take on the, they want to take on the media and they want to take on St. Catherine City Hall. So we're walking from the White House of Rock to the Standard to City Hall. And then we're going to hang out in St. Catharines downtown in the evening. Um, I guess advocating, talking to people, getting into arguments, uh, constructive arguments, um, dodging insults, the usual. That's, that's, what, that's what we're doing tomorrow. And then Thursday we'll be at the region. Um, I was thinking of walking around the region seven times. Um, <laughs> one for each month of the new... Mass. Oh, so it's some hex or some it's a Jericho, witchcraft. Jericho, you know oh, the okay, story no. of Jericho. No. Do you know? Oh the, yeah. The story okay. Of yeah. 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 Of right? course. So, yeah. 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 So that's. And then it's also seven months. So I was thinking of walking around Niagara <laughs> region seven times. He's getting biblical. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, uh, I don't expect many people. People are really, really dispirited. The media really beat them up this week. The media did a real number on us over the weekend. Uh, we got a lot of ink. We got a lot of ink. Did you know that they printed a story that says no one has been charged in mask by law? Uh, and then I had to tell them that, well, there is one person, and it's me. And they're like, oh, do you have any proof? So I sent proof, and they're like, oh, we'll write a correction. And it had a tiny little correction on page one in the corner on Monday. But on Saturday, it was like, no one has been charged. So I guess people across Niagara think no one has been charged in the bylaw. No, but you weren't charged for mass, though. You're charged for mischief. Both. Oh, they got, oh, okay, they Both did. Both the punitive charge for the mask. Oh, I think, okay, I only thought that you got mischief and that didn't cover asked. Up. I mean, nobody, nobody suggested, like, so what's the mass, other people. What's the mass charge called specifically? It's called an infraction of the facial covering bylaw. And it is officially a bylaw. It's not a mandate. It's a bylaw. It's. Okay. Uh, I didn't think they could do a bylaw 46, that quickly. 2020-46. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's the name of the, the, the number of the bylaw, if I recall correctly. And then the one to extend it is 20, 2064 and extend it. I mean, they announced how long they're going to extend it yesterday. So Laura Ip was on Matt Holmes in the morning, and no one said for Shh. seven months. Wow! They just said, "Oh, we got to extend it. It's the right thing to do." Like, well, they, everyone would assume that you're extending it for the same term of the original deal. Yeah, which was that's what an incorrect three months. I guess it was two months. Two months. And it was two days after it went into effect that I pulled up the stickers. I pulled up the stickers in direct opposition. And which is why I, got I mean, if with you it. look at the infection and death curve. Yeah. Why, like of all times, why now? Right. Well, and uh, is anyone going to give the? It's the, hard to explain. Potential why. consideration to the fact that numbers are climbing. I don't. I'm not. I, this is not my area of expertise. But could it have a? Could it be? Is there a correlation there? Is a partial? You know. Um. I'm not saying it's the, the reason. I think we're going to see spikes. We, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, everyone says the second wave is undeniable. It's coming. Well, they've done a really terrible job of preparing us for it. I mean, one of the points I make in the press release they sent was <coughs> if we don't trust the experts, that's their fault, not ours. If, if, if we don't trust the experts, it's because of their agenda, not ours. We don't have an agenda by distrusting them. We don't distrust them because of an agenda or because of our personal failure, the experts who've been communicating to the public over the last eight months, I guess it's been now, have been entirely inconsistent. And and they've, they're giving us a bleak and hopeless future, both immediately and long-term. One of the things I was shouting sarcastically today at Clifton Hill was, Christmas is canceled, Easter's canceled, right? I, that's... Church is canceled. I'm not. 
I didn't grow up being particular. I grew up religious, then I went atheist, and then I came back to decide, you know what, sort of Jordan Peterson, like, listen to him a lot. Yeah, they'll be like, all right, you know, there's a really good foundational, it's good for society to have Christian values. Whether or not there's Why would you ever want to say that, you know, that's that's incredibly racist and intolerant of <laughs> you to say. And, right. you know, Jordan Peterson, why would you ever want to better yourself through, right. you Clean know, psycho, psychoanalysis and, you know, lectures given by an extremely bright uh, psychologist, uh, um, uh, what's his uh, clinical uh, psychologist? Yeah. Like, the dude is bright. Yes. And he's, he's only... The only thing he wants to bring is um, responsibility. That's why everyone's, you know, especially young men have been so drawn to him because he's like, clean up your room, take responsibility for your life. Stop doing the things you know you should stop doing. Start doing some of the things you know you should start doing. It's simple. You know, down the road, the exponential growth and development that you'll have if you just improve the compound interest of improving your life a half a percent a day, you know, over 30, 90 days, three years, you won't even recognize your life. Like, who? and you know, I hate to, you know, I'm targeting Laura. Yep, but I mean, she, you know, I get in trouble for calling her names. She sure. called one of the brightest thinkers. Whether you like his, uh, most people that carve on Jordan Peterson haven't listened to his stuff. Sure, they take a little thing that he said about you know women or you know with gender or something like this, and then they perpetuate right. that. And I've listened to all his stuff. I mean, all of it. Yeah, pretty much. several yeah. times. Yeah, and I, the, the the stuff that you get from. And here's the other thing. What, you, you know, what did she call him? Are you going to use a moron? She, she tweeted, you're, oh. you're a moron. Now, she didn't I, say fucking moron. She just right. didn't say Jesus fucking Christ. But the thing, and you know what? Here's the thing. I used to be friendly with Laura. Uh-huh. Like when I go back in my text messages, I keep everything. Like I've got this on my iPhone. I've got my first text message that I've sent anyone, I think, down there somewhere. Right. Like my, my file is huge. And I started going through our text messages. And I'm going, what the hell? We went out a few times. We we're very friendly. We worked on campaigns yeah. and anti campaigns together. You know what changed? My politics. Right. And then all of a sudden you can't be friends. And then he makes fun of someone. And so the Jesus fucking Christ posts that she is an atheist as an elected counselor, which huh. I find disrespectful to all religions. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna trash a, a single religion, oh, I didn't know that. The Christian. That that's the what it all. That's where it all came from. Is that the context of the? Yeah, yeah. I said, why do you hate Christians so much? We built your fucking society, and then okay. I called her that, DFC. <laughs> And it was funny. I mean, it's a bit. I'm having a blast. Yeah, I'm doing a bit. Like, like, I mean, you're, well, you're going to get in. So, or are you going to get and, canceled? You know, I made fun of the crying counselors the other day when they were talking about, I don't know, the, 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 the social justice party. And they're like, Kelly, I'm going to I'm fucking ripping. I'm like, and the, the, the other one, I don't know, the the ginger from, uh, I'm like, see, this is why women shouldn't be in politics. It's a get funny. Like, if you can't take it, get out. Right. You know, so yeah, that's where it all came from. But, you know, it didn't, you know, and I'm not, again, I'm a Christian guy. I'm not offended by that. But I think you're not taking Mohammed's name in vain. I wonder why. Right. You know what the backlash would be if you said something about Allah or something? Right. But Christians are fair game. Sure. Where'd the tweets go? They evaporated. Oh. I asked her four years to take the tweet, four, go, four, four years ago to take the tweets down. No, and as an elected politician, it just came to a head. I'm like, what the fuck? Right. How can an elected politician have this take in public right. and not be censored for it? How, I, 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 how does a regional counselor become elected? Well, like she did. I don't know. Well, I've well, how does elected. a regional counselor become unelected? Well, I don't know. See, the, 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 the Niagara Dailies ran this three-part series. This, on? this last month called uh, Her Story or Her Side or something like that. Oh. Where they're like, the women in local politics are being abused and mistreated. Oh, for fuck's sake. And, and like, so, you know right, what? That's probably, you, can, you can find a lot of examples of I love true. women, but no. they're not victims. And I'm not going to say, no, you know, these, well, you need a hand. You need a man to give you a hand. These particular individuals have radical political objectives to transform our lives. And they always have. So having people lash out at them with words just to signal that we're mad that they're trying to transform our lives. That's, there's a reason that it's, 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 it's frustrating to see when someone uses their gender as a shield from accountability from 
their policies that are disagreeable. Okay, so I, I find that that, and that's just this this the the virtue signal easy journalism that we're in these days where that's the narrative. All right, fine by me. That's fine by me. Uh, I don't I don't know I. I think that there's a, and we should touch upon it because it is relevant. I think that if you hate Trump, you love COVID. You love the masks. You love the controls. If you love Trump or don't hate Trump, you're like, eh, this doesn't really make much sense. So if you want a world that's led by transnational European globalists, then you love COVID. And if you want a world that's led by America, then you love Trump. And so the ideological basis is is where we start from. How, what do you think about the world? And then you take in all the information. And so the people who are like, fuck Trump, are the people who... This, is, this, is, this has been the worst year for Trump, and it should have been the best. By, by January 20th, 2019, when we were watching the Covington kid get smirked at, he had won the election. By the end of 2019, Trump had won the election. It's beyond question. And then all of the 2020 stuff happened, like as if it happened naturally, organically, out of nowhere. The same people that are falling in line with masks want to keep a shutdown in place. They want to open borders. <laughs> right. And they want uh, a vac an untested vaccine that's been rushed to the market. They all get in line with, they're all on the same page when it comes to those issues. You can't separate them. And I'm sure there's more. Yes. Where the intersection, uh, the intersectionality of the beliefs is not just, it doesn't just stop the mass, it goes. Yes. Yeah. And these people are all on the same page. And what I find very few that are willing to say enough already. What's the game in Canada though? Like I can almost understand why America is going through this COVID-based civil war. But why why in Canada? Hmm. I mean, we Trump isn't going to be our president. We don't need to run a, a game on society to control society. To protesting Trump Black Lives president. Matter in Europe. I mean, they're rioting in, in, UK, in Montreal. Of yeah. In Ireland of all places. <laughs> right. And, and whereas uh, these societies are, are pretty, pretty good to each other relative to other societies. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why we can't just recognize and give us give ourselves a little bit of credit for where we've come from and how we're doing. We're more tolerant and right. understanding no, than we've sure. ever been in society, yeah. ever. We're standing Hands on the Hands down. Guess what? Every generation's better. Which generation yeah. can look back on the, on the last one and go, Oh, we're worse off than them. Don't tell me this one does. Don't tell me any of them ever have. I just don't believe that it, that we're getting better. But nobody wants to give us credit. We're yeah. systema systemically r racist right through right. the whole RCMP. Not just right. a couple cops. The whole legal system. Right. The whole burn it all down. Yes. I don't get it. My, my heart breaks. My heart well, breaks I mean, for the riots. I've done and, some reading and I've I've perceived a lot of that stuff to be what you would expect out of an enemy trying to demoralize a nation. So there's a few different uh, touchstone references to make, uh, you know, how to demoralize a society. Uh, the Russian guy who's like, he goes through it. He's ex-KGB and he, he explains how to demoralize a society. And it was like 1985. And when you listen to it, it sounds like everything we've just been through. Um, and then also the, the 36 stratagems, uh, which is a, a ancient Chinese strategy book. And I read that very, very closely. And I find that to be sort of very fascinating stuff to sort of, if you look at the world we're in and, and, and you get, you get rid of the explicit narrative you're presented and you look at just the phenomenon, you try to figure out what are the incentives of the, all the different, parties involved um so that brings me to the question of why in canada are we so like covid aholics <laughs> did i just coin that 
Yeah. I just coined that COVIDaholics. I met a lot of them down at Clifton Hill. And I was like, why not eight months? Why not nine months? Why not forever? Why Why does it have to be? Why, not, why seven months? I'm talking about, of course, the mask bylaw. And people are like, yeah, why not eight months? I'm like masks forever. Masks until the vaccine. They seem to be into it. But look, not entirely. So we're in a bit of a interesting sort of moment. It's the it's the time of it's the best of times and the worst of times, I'd say. I yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'd say that uh for the listeners out there, the thing to do is is like and share. I mean, to come on out, I you know, I don't want to be a I'm an advocate, so I want to I want to draw people in and have them participate in what we're doing. I'll ultimately, we want people to be inspired to pursue their authenticity. So, you know, do you uh, do the right thing? Clean your room, you know, that sort of stuff. I'm not sure why I actually brought up the uh, I mentioned God, but I don't remember why. <laughs> Perfect. I but think I might have lost the stream, too. We're still recording. But it looks like Twitter and Facebook. Well, I still got a live sticker here, but uh, I'm just going to put this up because we've been rolling hour 20 minutes. So your oh, hugs really? over masks on Facebook. So is let's, up. Uh, let's close it up. Yeah, it's time I for got, us to take a break. I got my, uh, no, I got my baby mama waiting for us. Cool, man. I thought, I thought we'd be just about an hour. Sandor, I love you, man. Thanks for doing what you do. I appreciate you. you coming in, taking the time to come into the show and talk about your frustration, your experience, and... Um, your treatment by the media, and I hope it, I hope you get some better coverage. I, I, I don't think it'll happen. No, but, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, We're not going to get any coverage now. Yeah, it's. I'm glad to offer you a little bit of a platform, anyways, to come on and say the pieces that maybe don't get said, other than your, sure. you know, your Facebook page or something like that, yeah. which I appreciate. Very cool. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I've been associated with controversial groups in the past, but. I'm not joining that group. Are you crazy? I don't. I don't want people going. Oh yeah, Jim Ben and you, anti. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's the next red pill for you, pal. Yeah. <laughs> the next, it'll die. No, I support slowly. you, and I, I, you know, I'm. Yeah, call me uh, a heartless bastard, but well, you platformed me, so that's even worse than clicking like. What's that? You've provided platform for my views. Yeah, that's well, there worse you than go. Clicking like. uh, yeah, so what's my problem? Why, why join, don't I just click like? And join the damn join group. Join the group and troll us. Oh look, there you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Display. Uh, let's see. Oh, no. I got access. Okay. I fucking joined. All right. Thanks for uh, coming in. Thanks for watching, listening, wherever you are, uh, whatever platform you're on. This is where you got to go right here. Hugs over mass in the Niagara chapter. Sandor came in today to give me an hour and a half of his time. I appreciate it. Thank you, my brother. Good luck. Thank you, Jim. And we'll talk to you soon. Peace, love, and go hug your neighbor. Take your mask off. Stop being a dildo. I'm out.